Sharma and Mr. Satya Prakash. Please be there with me and bear with me for a couple of minutes. And whoever is seated in this banquet hall, whoever is seated, not even standing, will be handing over the lucky draw winners. Okay, so let us proceed to the lucky draw. Let's see who it is. May I have your kind attention, everyone. And mind you, only people who are seated. We are, we are just starting. I know everyone is curious. The lucky winner is Mr. Mr. Patel from Cardolite Specialty Chemicals India. And the lucky winner is Mr. Paras Patel from Cordolite Speciality Chemicals, India LLP. Is, it? is he here? No. Next one. Okay. Since it's a lucky draw, we have to make it quick and fast. And it's to be presented only to the uh, people who are seated. Shri Kiran from Korob India Private Limited. Is he here? No. Okay. Sir, what's your name? You have to run fast, sir, within 30 seconds. Yeah, whoever <laughs> comes fast, I have to come running. And the gifts are very interesting, huh? <laughs> so, then, so, my, I'm a lucky hand for you. <laughs> sir, sir, please to the center. Please to the center. Yeah. So, let's see what he has got. What is it? It does look like a laptop. It's Amazing. <laughs> It is a laptop. Thank you. This is also yours. Okay. Have you received this before? No, I don't. Now I request uh, Shri Amit Mishra to accompany Mr. Devan Sangvi and Monojit Chaudhary on the dais. Mr. Devan Sangvi and Mr. Monoji Chaudhary are directors with Nitrix Chemicals India Limited. Can we have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? For the experience of more than 35 years, Nitrix has been serving customers in India and several countries. Now, I request uh, Sri Amit Mishra to please hand over the beach box to the gentleman. And we'll be discussing about safety insights and future trends. Over to you, gentlemen. Yes. Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me and my colleague to be here with all of you this morning. I thank IPCA leadership and its president, Rohanji, for giving us this opportunity. Before I hand out this over to my colleague, Manojit, who would be sharing his views about nitrocellulose, its safety, handling, and storage. And before I leave this, I wanted to thank all IPCA members who have been very integral part of uh, nitrocellulose business and their support to us for last 40 years. So I'll give this to Manojit and uh, he would uh, share his views. Thank you, Deva. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've got a different type of topic to cover after what we've heard. And I was wondering how I should approach this because uh, you know when you talk about safety of something normally people tend to think that it's again going to be a, a dreary list of uh, ticking boxes and things like that 
So then I realized that, you know, I, I had this pencil which I picked up from a table. Uh, then I decided that, you know, let me approach it in a different way. And I saw this pencil on my table. And when you talk of nitro cotton or nitrocellulose or cellulose nitrate actually, it's all to do with surfaces. And when you use any surface application, you know, you put it and tend to forget about it. And therefore, you know, you don't really always analyze what goes into it. Now, whether it's safe, whether it's stable, whether it's, uh, you know, going to cause any harm to the user, whether it's going to cause any harm while it's being made, handled, transported. So, <clears throat> in the limited time that I had, <clears throat> sorry, what I decided was we'll just look at the cellulose nitrate and just look at the properties and therefore work back and see what are relevant to people who use it, to people who transport it, to people who store it. Now, there are a couple of slides which are, you know, it will seem like a chemistry lecture. Please just take it as if you've gone to a, you know, art gallery and you're looking at a photograph, uh, a picture, and you're just spent 10 seconds on that and then think about it. Don't think too much about it. You will see some pretty nasty names there. TNT, RDX, HMX, PTN. I mean, these are things which you read off in the newspaper also, unfortunately. And therefore, you know, now it gives you a snapshot of what these things are. So, let's say this is one uh, painting in a gallery. And this is a general snapshot, you're in a, you know, a gallery and you look at this. And then you look at this. This is actually cellulose nitrate. It's a, uh, not the grade that we normally put in the industrial cellulose nitrate. This is uh, the one that is the explosive grade. However, if you just remove one NO2 from somewhere, it becomes an industrial grade. So, I just do this to people, you know, who handle this product. So, there are certain similarities which are there between those very dangerous things that you see on the board and this so-called innocuous chemical that goes into so many surface activities. What normally happens is that, you know, if it's a pencil, you, you don't think about it, but it does contain cellulose nitrate outside. If you look at certain surface coatings, it would contain cellulose nitrate inside. So, what is it that you need to think about this product that will help you to, number one, buy it safely, store it safely, transport it safely, use it safely. We have, you know, we use uh, the cellulose nitrate in several activities and I think we were talking of risk assessment with respect to uh, use. So, unless, you know, we go into the properties of this particular product, it would be a little difficult to do a proper risk assessment. So, what ex exactly is this? And unless we are aware of the hazards related to this particular product, you know, uh, in any, in, in behavioral safety parlance, you know, uh, your behavior is directly triggered by the consequence that you perceive. So if you think that, you know, I'm handling, uh, you know, chocolate cake, so you would handle NC like chocolate cake. Now, if you think, no, there's something more to it, and you understand the basis of that, then you think of which are the particular areas. Now, I don't have time to go into the whole gamut and I won't like to make it boring. Uh, so what I do is I'll quickly 
look at some of the key features. So as I said, uh, we need to understand what the hazards are. Based on those, how are they applicable to us, whether we're storing it, or transporting it, or using it? Uh, the little picture in the bottom is the actual uh, nitrocellulose that you use. Let me tell you that it's a polymer, and it's a polymer made from natural products. So keep in mind that it's not a synthetic polymer that you can make from a, a very, very precise monomer. It's a, you know, it's a natural cellulose that you use. So there are variabilities. So when you talk about a grade of nitrocellulose with a particular uh, distribution of uh, polymer chains and therefore a particular nitrogen content, the nitrogen content, if it goes to above 12.5, then it goes into the explosive grade. We are not talking about that. We are talking about the industrial nitrocellulose. But that doesn't make nitrocellulose safe and therefore, you know, forget about it. Some people think that just because it's an explosive grade nitrocellulose, we need to think about it. No, we need to think about even the nitrocellulose that we use between 10.7 and uh, uh, 12.2 percent that is normally used industrially and the reasons for that are the ones which I will briefly touch upon because those are the things that will determine how safely you can handle this cellulose nitrate in whatever form of uh, use. The cellulose as I said the industrial grade is about 10.7 to 12.2 percent nitrogen. Now we must understand that the full, if you nitrate the full thing, it will be 14 percent. Now that's uh, like the full uh, explosives grade. However, 13 point something percent is the maximum you get industrially. Now that's explosive grade. Normally, if you talk of 12.2 is the industrial grade. So once you make nitrocellulose at this nitrogen content, it's normally much safer than the explosives grade and does not need the, uh, you know, it doesn't have the hazards of explosion as much as the 13.3 under normal circumstances. Now, where would these things go wrong even with this grade of nitrocellulose? Now, nitrocellulose, as I said, contains a range of uh, uh, polymer chains. It can be a trinitro, it can be a dinitro, it can be a mononitro. So even if you have a 12.2% nitrogen, please remember that it has got polymer chains which are trinitro inside that. So if I just take an example, a 12.2% nitrocellulose would have 50% of the polymer chains which are trinitro and about uh, 35 which are di and 15 which are tri, uh, mono. So there would be a distribution. So it's not a pure product, it's a distribution of products. So the, va uh, the variability has to be controlled when you manufacture it. Also, when you're storing nitrocellulose, you've got to be very careful about the stability. There are two or three things which have to be kept in mind. Number one, dry nitrocellulose is extremely, extremely uh, flammable and dry nitrocellulose cannot be handled. It has to be damped to a minimum of 30%. And once it is damped with a solvent or water, then it becomes safe to handle. Dry nitrocellulose on its own cannot be handled at whatever uh, you know, nitrogen content it is. Now, once you store uh, nitrocellulose, one of the problems is that at higher temperatures, it starts degrading. And by degrading, the, some of the groups keep breaking up and forms acid. And that acid keeps catalyzing the reaction of further degradation. And the practical way, if you can see it in the field, is basically you see some uh, you know, brown stuff coming uh, from the drum inside. Now, th this is one thing which practically people, when they're transporting, you know, and they see this thing coming, they realize that you know the outside NO2s have started disintegrating. So stability of nitrocellulose is extremely critical because uh, 
depending on temperature, the stability of nitrocellulose would vary. The lower the temperature, the more stable it is. <clears throat> so if you're storing nitrocellulose at 45 degrees Celsius, and you're storing nitrocellulose in uh, a foreign country, the nitrocellulose, dis uh, the disintegration of nitrocellulose in colder temperatures is much lower. So the temperature of storage of nitrocellulose is critical so that it does not decompose. Fire is a very common feature because it's a very flammable thing and normally nitrocellulose would burn off if the gas is released. But under confined circumstances, uh, let's say you've got nitrocellulose in a container, in a, in a package, even a small package. If there's a pressure buildup inside it, the package lid can pop. So the stability again becomes a very major uh, point to remember and therefore the supplier's stability criterion for supply of the material is of prime importance when we are handling nitrocellulose. Now nitrocellulose even though, you know, uh, as I said, when you are comparing it with other explosives, it has got an extremely high power of uh, explosion and it's very close to that of uh, nitroglycerine. So if at any point in time you have dry nitrocellulose present in a confined condition and it burns and if it does explode, it can be extremely hazardous. So there are some of the basic things that we can simplify. Store as less as possible. Get the quality criteria for purchase of nitrocellulose absolutely, absolutely right. Because in hot climates like India, unless you have air-conditioned storages, there is bound to be, if drums are kept outside, I'm just saying practical things, you offload a drum, keep it outside, you forget about it, it will reach 45 degrees Celsius. And 45 degrees Celsius leads to start of decomposition of any nitrocellulose. Very small, but it does. So we should not leave nitrocellulose in drums outside. Even when we are storing it, it should be isolated storages and away from working areas and uh, long distance storage as long as we are doing it under controlled conditions is okay but Indian roads I think is not controlled conditions so you know the lesser you transport it the better it is because again handling multiple times leads to high risks So if we just now get it down into two or three points, uh, highly flammable, fire, spark, impact, friction, these should be avoided. It should never be allowed to dry out. So nitrocellulose, whether it contains any solvent, the natural tendency of the solvent is to evaporate if we leave it open. So leaving a package open, and not closed would lead to depletion of the solvent and therefore your nitrocellulose would not remain the same as what you had bought. And then with the, de uh, the depletion of the solvent content, your nitrocellulose no longer remains safe. How safe, how much, not, I think that's a very long story. So, so um, uh, that we can't uh, go into this right now, but don't let it dry out. And of course, the last one is uh, what I just mentioned. If you reduce the amount of solvent in nitrocellulose, the rate of burning goes up even faster. Solvent will evaporate if you leave the container open. So uh, the way you handle the packages, once you open a package, use it, Otherwise what happens is the solvent evaporates and the NC becomes dry. And once NC becomes dry, you cannot really uh, call it safe nitrocellulose because the amount of solvent in that nitrocellulose falls below the safe range of 30%.
The other thing is nitrocellulose is very dependent on temperature. I think this is another and the last major point I'll make. So a flame source should be kept away. We should ensure that the nitrocellulose is stable. We should ensure that it is uh, dry. It is not dry. And uh, we should also ensure that the storage temperatures are as practicably low as possible. And therefore, you know, when we talk about NC storage in the countries which make it abroad, the uh, data which we get from their stability is, uh, you know, very different from when we would be storing it at 45. And I have some data here with me where if you, you know, it's basically the stability is measured in the amount of nitrous fumes that are generated at a particular temperature in a particular time. So if you do it at 45 degrees, you get X amount in about few hours. If you do it at 60 degrees, you will get the same thing in a few minutes. So there are uh, various correlations in terms of decomposition. So I will reiterate the temperature of storage, the lack of any fire source impact friction, the dryness factor of nitrocellulose, and the exposure to external heat. These are the four practical things based on which everything else, you know, we uh, decide on when we are either handling or manufacturing or storing or using. See, decomposition, if it's uncontrolled, can lead to ignition. Ignition, if you're, you know, it, it can burn off the whole thing and it burns so fast that, you know, you, you will go through the entire inventory in no time. And even if you have the best sprinklers, therefore, the first point that I made, keep as low an inventory as possible. Do not keep more than uh, a certain amount. And all these things are available in terms of uh, uh, numbers. I don't have time to go into that. If anybody is interested, I can share with them at a later time. But uh, if it does deflagrate under uh, conditions where it is uh, sort of not open, then the gases that are generated would definitely uh, tend to lead it to an explosive environment. So you can have uh, nitrocellulose blowing up in centrifuges, you can have nitrocellulose blowing up in uh, stirred vessels, depending on, you know, uh, what state you've brought the nitrocellulose to. So therefore, uh, you know, dry nitrocellulose or nitrocellulose as such, uh, in any drive or any uh, uh, rotary parts or anything is extremely dangerous. So those are the simple things which arise from this factor. Uh, friction dependence, uh, thermal instability, and uh, uh, even small amount of nitrocellulose can burn so fast that it can burn things around it. And one thing we must remember, nitrocellulose is always linked to a solvent. So here you really have a double whammy. You know, if the nitrocellulose goes off, it's going to take the solvent with it. So it's not just uh, nitrocellulose, you're going to burn the whole place down. And we have seen places where, um, you know, the fire may have originated from anywhere. But because solvent nitrocellulose is handled together, the risks are even higher. And especially from the point of view of static hazards, because nitrocellulose dust and solvents are equally susceptible to uh, uh, static hazard. So, static hazard is another thing which comes up automatically when you are handling nitrocellulose. Uh, this is what I said just now. Both the solvent and the powder can take off. But, uh, this is basically uh, day-to-day -day operation stuff which many of you may not be really interested in so I will not uh, dwell too much into these things where it will tell you how much to keep, where to keep, what firefighting equipment to have, those are all available. 
what I'm basically trying to summarize about nitro cellulosis, if we know what the material is and if we know what can happen to the material, then the people who are handling it are more knowledgeable about what can be the consequence if something is seen which is untoward. You see a brown fume, you see a hot drum of nitrocellulose, you see a flame source, you see a uh, improper earthing somewhere. All these things are small things, but all these things arise from the fact that nitrocellulose is not perfect. It can, even the safest nitrocellulose, what you call it, safe, which is industrial nitrocellulose, if not handled properly, can become a source of concern. So, I will again get back to it. Extremely flammable, can go from deflagration to detonation under certain conditions, not always. Number two is that depending on the temperature in which it is stored, the extent to which it starts decomposing can be controlled. If that is not taken care of, then that slowly degrades and in storage conditions, you may not even be able to go and see. And if it is degrading, then it might lead to a hazard. So regular inspection of stored nitrocellulose is another thing which has to be a common practice. Um, equipment to handle it, obviously, you know, you cannot generate spark, you cannot generate friction, you cannot uh, you know, you can't, can't just take nitrocellulose and hammer it with, uh, you know, a, a normal hammer and nail. So we'll have to be uh, careful about how we do maintenance on nitrocellulose uh, equipment. So there are standards around nitrocellulose storage which I said are available, but I think Generically, uh, the problems around nitrocellulose, I have tried to cover as much as possible in terms of what can happen even if you're handling so-called industrial nitrocellulose. And the way when I am manufacturing it, what I tell people is that uh, you would rather treat the material that you're handling as if you're handling gun cotton. For, uh, forget about the fact that it has, you know, 12% uh, nitrogen content. But if you treat it with respect, then the chances of it going awry is very low. So the, you know, in a nutshell, if I were just to wind up, uh, uh, the, the conditions under which nitrocellulose is stable are pretty well defined. The conditions under which stable nitrocellulose is sold are pretty well defined. And therefore, the COA, etc., I think I don't need to read them out. They're pretty well defined. The uh, power of nitrocellulose as an explosive is pretty well established. So preventing a fire is something which is of prime importance. Storing and handling it properly, having proper firefighting facilities for uh, handling the nitrocellulose, and uh, uh, temperature at which you're storing it. So these are the four or five important points I'd just like to uh, uh, reiterate. And uh, in case there are any questions, I am quite uh, willing to take it. Thank you. Sorry. To please be on stage and requesting uh, Sri Amit Mishra to present a token of appreciation to the speakers. Any questions, please? Yes. Can we have the mic? There are some questions. Is there any question? I thought somebody was taking the mic. No? Okay. Fine. Okay. The question. That's okay. Not a problem. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, like uh, Mr. Chaudhary, you were mentioning that uh, at 45, am I clear? Am I audible? Yeah. 
so at 45 degrees, you were mentioning that the deterioration of nitrocellulose starts to initiate. So uh, in North India, like the uh, common conditions is like temperatures usually go up to 47, 48 degrees. And even if we are storing them at an isolated place, under closed conditions, yep. temperatures would usually go up because there's a lot of trapped heat inside the room. So we can expect that the deterioration has taken place in the nitrocellulose. So my question is that what uh, qualities in the ultimate coating, you know, take a beating when this deterioration takes place? I mean, what exactly, what, what can we expect on the quality front of the final coating which can take a beating? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, when you're buying industrial nitrocellulose, uh, you have a set of quality criteria which you specify, right? Uh, what I would like to ask you is, when uh, you're buying industrial nitrocellulose, what is the criteria for stability that you specify in your, uh, you know, inquiry? How would you? Uh, define that because based on that I will give you an answer so uh, there's a stability basically that uh, I, I mean I don't look into it uh, completely but uh, whatever testing we do I mean it's mostly on the solids which we are more concerned about the, the solid part of the uh, NC so that is what, because when we do the final testing of the coating, we, what we see that the solid should be within the percentage. So if the solid is all right, but the, I'm talking about the chemical deterioration. Yeah. So I'm more concerned about the chemical uh, deterioration, not about the, the other physical uh, aspects of the uh, coating. The, the deterioration of uh, the nitrocellulose is defined by what we call the BNJ test. It's called the Bergman and Junk test which is basically an accelerated study of decomposition of nitrocellulose at about 132 degrees centigrade for two hours and you find out how much NOx is generated. Now that is then extrapolated to at lower temperatures, this is an accelerated stability test. You can then say that okay, if at 132 for two hours, this is the amount of NOx generated this is going to be stable for one and a half years under 30 degrees centigrade. So there is a basic test which is done when we manufacture it which uh, specifies the stability. Okay. And, and, and uh, so I'll take this off. I, I'll show you the data offline. I'll That's speak to you. Thank you. Request uh, both the speakers to please stay back, sir. Uh, we'll be proceeding to the lucky draw. So let's see who's getting lucky this time towards the screen. But I'm standing here, so. <laughs> It's uh, Ajay Vichandani, Jason's Industries Limited. Is he here? Yeah, no. Whoever is a winner, they have to come fast. Oh? We have only 30 seconds time limit. So faster. Thank you, Amit sir. Thank you so much and thanks to our speakers.